So we're in the Bahamas. We're as far north in the Bahamas as you can get. And we're currently in a bay. We stayed here last night and our plans have slightly changed. We were going to take it particularly easy and come up through the Bahamas and then make our way across to Florida, which is literally 50 miles that way. However, we've decided to alter our course and we're going to leave here tomorrow and do about a four day sail, maybe three days, maybe four days. Um, and we're trying to decide the best route. And James has come up with quite a clever plan. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a clever plan, but it's definitely a plan. So for those of you that don't know, there's um, a current called the Gulf Stream and it runs sort of from the Caribbean um, all the way up the coast of Florida, sort of past uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and out towards the North Atlantic. And the current can be quite strong. I think the average speed's about two and a half to three and a half knots. Um, and if we can get into that and have that behind us, we can probably average maybe nine plus knots, which will be amazing. We'll really be able to um, do this passage pretty quickly. But this was one of the challenging things the, with the Gulf Stream, because of the current, you want the wind behind you. You don't want any northerly component in the wind because that can make the sea state really, really rough if you've got wind over tide or wind over current in this case. Um, so we've, we've got a weather window um, of about three days of really light winds. Um, very light winds. Yeah, that's the issue. <laughs> They're very, very light. And we may find ourselves motoring a lot of the way or motor sailing a lot of the way. So it's been very difficult for us to plan um, how long this passage is going to take. Um, with a bit of wind behind us and the Gulf Stream, I think we could do it in three days, like two nights. But I think realistically, because there's very little wind, it's going to be three nights. Um, we put the code zero up today as well. Yeah. So maybe if we're downwind, it might give us a bit more speed yeah, or so, even on a beam reach. I mean, the Code Zero is a light wind sail, um, but it's probably going to be perfect for the sort of conditions that we expect to encounter. Do you know what? The, the speed of the Gulf Stream might be more than the actual wind. Sometimes well, it's saying too. Yeah, this is the thing. Even if you've got like, say, six knots of wind, if it's behind you and we're doing three knots, the sails are just going to be flapping. It's not going to, it's not going to really do a lot. But. Um, Another issue is the Gulf Stream isn't marked on any of our charts um, and the location of the Gulf Stream changes slightly every day. The currents change slightly. So um, the first question I was trying to figure out is how do I plot our course through the Gulf Stream to make sure that we're in the Gulf Stream because once we're at sea we're not going to have internet so I can't just go online and, and see where the Gulf Stream is. So one option was to get a predict wind subscription, um, but ocean currents are only on their top subscription level, and I think the cost's about $500 a year. So, um, and on top of that, in order to be able to get that data on board, I'd need satellite communication device. Um, I forget the name of it now. Um, I'm sure I'll remember it in a minute. But. Um, We'd need that and we don't have that. What we do have on board is a Garmin inReach, which is like a little uh, SMS communicator and I can download weather. I can't download grid files, but I can download weather um, and we can message people and talk to people on it and that works on the satellite network. Which is what we did across the Atlantic. Yeah, we had a weather router on the other end of that and he was telling us um, what the weather was going to be like and if there were any issues. But we don't have that on this trip and that's not going to really help us because I can't get the tidal currents on that. So um, I looked at the Windy app and again for those of you who don't know Windy it's uh, most people use it for, for wind but you can get all sorts of weather information on it and lo and behold they had currents on there and what's even more amazing is it's on their free tier as well you don't have to pay a thing it's absolutely free. Um, and that gives you a really nice um, graphical sort of uh, display of where the currents, where the Gulf Stream is flowing, and it also shows you the speed in the various places. Um, so that was great. But the next issue is, how do I 
plot a course on that and get it onto our chart plotters because obviously when we're at sea, as I said, we don't have internet, so I can't just log on to Windy on my phone. I need some way of being able to plot those waypoints um, into our chart plotter. So what I discovered was on uh, windy.com, if you actually go to their website and not the, uh, not the app on your phone, you can actually drop um, a marker and if you click the down arrow um, on the right hand side you get the latitude and longitude. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to get this information from Windy, plot a course and get it into our B&G um, chart plotters with the Navionic charts. So I'm going to go to www.windy.com And I'm going to select more layers and then I'm going to make sure that the currents is activated and I'm going to click that. Okay, so this shows us um, all the currents. So if we zoom in and we can see this is the Gulf Stream here. So we are going to, we are here at the moment, we are in um, West End, which is just here. And we're going to sail along here into the Gulf Stream and all the way up, follow it all the way around to uh, Beaufort here. That's where we're going to end up. Okay, so how do I get the... Um, waypoints most important thing first though is for me to select the right day so uh, midday tomorrow um, we could probably get there by midday tomorrow so first waypoint is going to be somewhere around here it's a little bit higher there but i think i'm gonna not go quite as far west so let's say there for the first one so if I then click the down arrow, I get the latitude and longitude here um, for that point. So that's perfect. But the problem is I can't copy and paste it, so I'd have to write it down. So um, quick little hack. If you go to inspect and open up the developer tools, um, we can see the value here. If we double click on it, we can then just copy those values. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it into a spreadsheet. Um, so let's just start a new spreadsheet. Okay, so I'm just going to put uh, W1 for waypoint one, and I'm going to paste in the value. Okay, so I've got the latitude and longitude for waypoint one so let me just put this over to the side the next waypoint we're going to look at we're going to go further up and I'm going to select one there let's just see where the strongest current is okay 2.8 looks like the strongest so that will go with that one um, and again inspect Double click on it, copy, and then waypoint two. Carry on finding the rest of your latitudinal and longitudinal points, as James has shown you through the Gulfstream, till you have all of your points listed in your spreadsheet. So now I've got my list of waypoints, I need to get those uh, into the chart plotter. Um, so I go into the charts function and I click the menu icon and I click new waypoint and then I've got to manually type each waypoint in. So I've already done the first one, so the second one is waypoint two, W2 I'm gonna call it, and then I need to put in the latitude and longitude, so it's 28 degrees, 1756, and it's 079, 49.55, save. Okay, there's my second waypoint. There, if we scroll out, there's my first waypoint there, there's my second one there, and we are there, so it's going up there, it looks like it's in the right place. So I need to do that for each waypoint, and then once I've got all of them in there, then I'll create a route with those waypoints, so I'll do that now.
Okay, so I've put all seven waypoints into the trial plotter now. So now I'm going to go to, if I click on the waypoints icon there, and then I'm going to go to routes, and I'm going to go new, and I'm going to say create using route list, and I'm going to call this Beaufort. Insert. Okay, here are my waypoints here. So W1, save. Okay, so I've got all my seven waypoints in there, and then I just click save. And now I've got the Beaufort route there. So yeah, now we've got our um, course plotted. Um, so tomorrow when we leave, we'll just select that route and then we'll be sailing in the Gulf Stream all the way. Next time, aboard Equus. We meet our friend Mike 100 miles offshore in the middle of the ocean. The weather turns rough unexpectedly as we near Beaufort City. And I put my first foot down on US soil.